Hey, welcome back to the channel. Doing some more work on the 2006 Chevy Cobalt. Today I'll be replacing the automatic transmission filter along with the fluid. First, you'll want to pop your hood here. So once you get your hood popped here, you can go ahead and pull off your oil fill cap here and then pry up on this engine cover here. And then replace your oil cap. So with that engine cover out of the way, uh, GM went away with the uh, automatic transmission dipstick on these cars. So the only way to check the level is to uh, jack it up, crawl underneath, and there's a plug that's threaded into the bottom of the transmission there, and that's where you check the level. But if you take a look here, so right down in there, you can see that black cap with the little gear on it. That's gonna be the transmission fill right there. It's just a little plug. So that's where we'll fill the transmission once we get it all drained and the filter changed on it. But I'm gonna go ahead and pull that plug now. So just kind of reach down here and that just unscrews. So go ahead and unscrew that. Here's a closer look at it. So now what we'll do is uh, we're gonna have to jack this up, get it nice and level. So we're gonna have to jack up all four corners and I'll get it on jack stands. And then uh, we can climb underneath there and pull the pan and start draining it. So I'm gonna go ahead and jack up the front end first. And uh, I'm gonna go right underneath the frame here. And then I'll put a jack stand under that part of the frame. Um, I was going to use a pinch weld here, but you can see how rusted it is. I don't want that uh, breaking off and dropping down on us. Alright, so as you can see, got both of my front jack stands up. And then I also got one on the rear driver there. And just with that rear driver being jacked up, you can see that my uh, passenger rear is off the ground from just... Uh, having that jack stand under there, but I'm gonna go ahead and put in fourth one here and what I was doing was I was jacking up right underneath Here kind of where the control arm connects to the frame So I jack put my jack here jacked it up and then I'm setting my jack stand right in front of that so let me go ahead and uh, Set that one up here I got it just kind of like that and uh, that should catch it if it drops anymore and then I'm not sure if you guys can see but I kind of just jacked it up to where the uh, car is level because they say it's supposed to be level when you drain this and then uh, also when you fill it so then what you want to do is crawl underneath here and then of course this is going to be our transmission pan here and if you wanted to get technical on the levelness you could always just grab a level stick it on here and you can see our bubbles right in the middle there, so we're level. And uh, so next we need to uh, drop this pan, get all these bolts out of here. And this transmission does not have a drain plug, so it might get messy doing this. Okay, so what I like to do when uh, I'm servicing transmissions is I like to collect all the old fluid that comes out. And then I put it in some empty bottles and I measure how much came out. Uh, because if your transmission is shifting just fine, you're not having any issues, then the uh, level is probably correct on this. And this one's not having any problems. We're just doing some general maintenance on it, you know, replacing the filter and fluid. So I like to measure how much comes out. That way we can use that as a reference to uh, adding it. And uh, the way I'm going to do this one is I got this like Tupperware bin here or storage bin. You can see it's a 28 quart. And then also got some cardboard laid down. But if you put this kind of at an angle like this, it should cover most of this whole pan there. So we can drop this pan and hopefully all the fluid will go into it. Or once we start pulling bolts, it may start leaking into this pan here. And it'll just make it a lot easier. And then we can measure how much came out. So now let's go ahead and start pulling some of these bolts here. Um, they're going to be an 8 millimeter. 
and I'll go ahead and start pulling some. We'll see if it starts leaking. If it does, I may let it drain just so it doesn't make a huge mess here, but see how it goes. And then I may have to uh, switch my position here as well. But I'll start out with this one here. there as you can see so I'll move my pan here start collecting some of that And you can see as I start loosening this, it starts opening up that pan quite a bit on that one side there. So I'll go ahead and let that drain some. And then once that slows down, I'll start pulling some of the other ones here. All right, so as you can see, that's kind of slowed down a little bit here. So let's go ahead and uh, pull a few more here and see what it does. And so as you can see, that's draining a little more here. So let me go ahead and move on to some of them back bolts there. And let's get the rest of these here. And then you may need to start holding it as well once we get close. So once you get this last one here, look at that. Hold your pan up, kind of. And then slowly tilt it towards the front there. See if you can get the rest of that to drain out. It's kind of like that. Once all that's pretty much drained out here, let's get our pan out of the way. And then you may need to move your drip pan to collect the rest of that. So now with that pan out of the way, this is going to be our filter here. So what you want to do is it pushes up into the transmission right here at the front. So let's go ahead and uh, go ahead and pull this. You're going to want to pull down on this and there'll probably be quite a bit more fluid that comes out with it. So just go ahead and pull down like that. And go ahead and let that drain into your pan there. Okay, so now let's take a look at our old filter here and then our pan. And, uh, this gasket that's on here is reusable and I will be reusing it because the new one I got didn't come with a uh, pan gasket. So I'll clean this one up and reuse it. So you can pull this one off of here and you can see on here that there's a couple like dowels on there as well that go up into the transmission to help hold it. So I'll get this out of the way here. And then on your pan here, this little square thing is going to be a magnet, which you should be able to remove. And then I'll go ahead and clean that up as well. 
And uh, also, I'll go ahead and wipe this all down and uh, use some brake clean, get this cleaned up really good, and then also the mating surface for the gasket. So I'll do that. And then here's the old filter. That's what that looks like. And I went ahead and bought the original, which I believe that's the same thing because it has the same numbers and everything on it. So that's probably the original transmission filter. And I uh, went with the GM2422762. Got this off of Amazon. I'll put a link in the description for it. It's pretty much the same filter that was on there. And then they also give you this that goes up into the transmission as well. And like I said, no uh, gasket with this since we'll be reusing it. So let me go ahead and get that uh, pan all cleaned up here really quick. Okay, so as you can see, you got that uh, pan all cleaned out. Looks a lot better. And you can see he has a little damage here where they must have hit something underneath, but it's it's not uh, leaking or anything. And then I uh, got the magnet cleaned up, and I'll go ahead and put this back where it was. I think it was kind of right in this area here. And then also got the uh, gasket all cleaned up. So you can go ahead and stick that on here. And then push in these little dowels right here. And of course, this will only go on here one way. So now let's go ahead and get the filter up in there. So the next step is optional. Um, if this is still in good shape, you can always reuse it. I've used these, reused these plenty of times with no issues. Uh, but today I'll go ahead and just replace it. Um, so what you want to use is a, uh, you can use like a seal puller like this. But you got to be very careful not to scratch the uh, inside up in there because this is just soft aluminum. So I'm going to go ahead and try it with the seal puller here real quick. See if that works. So I just get up under there. And you may have to do this a few tries to get it right. Like I said, just be careful when you're doing this up in there. You can see it starting to come out there. Let me try another spot here. And of course the rubber is just ripping on me here. Let's try it right here maybe. on me so you can see it kind of started coming out right there so let me get a better position here there we go starting to come out there so let me grab some pliers and see if i can just yank it out there now let's just grab a pair of needle nose here and let's just see if we can get that out the rest of the way course not so let me try a little more here there we go so we got that out let me grab the new one so then grab your new one and then you can just take some of this uh, old fluid that's on here just kind of coat this new one in it just so that slides up in there a little better here Let me go ahead and get that up in there by hand. Kind of started there. And then I'm just going to use a, uh, just kind of a dead blow hammer here. Fits around that pretty nice. Let me just see if we can get that up in there. Pretty much like that. Just make sure it's up in there evenly and we should be good. Let me grab the filter now. So then go ahead and grab your filter and I'll do kind of the same here just with some of this.
transmission fluid. Just kind of coat that a little bit here. Now let's go ahead and uh, stick this up in here. You may need to just kind of press right up in here. And just the friction kind of holds that filter in there. So just kind of like that. So now with our filter and everything in there, I'm going to go ahead and clean up all along the gasket mating surface. Um, just spraying some brake clean on my rag and then uh, just wiping that off and then we'll get our pan up in here. Okay, so as you can see, got that all cleaned up. Everything looks good. So now we can go ahead and uh, grab our pan and our gasket and uh, get some of those started there. And then remember you got those uh, dowels there and then the one up here. So make sure you get those pressed in first. So kind of get that started up in that one. And same with this side. So kind of like that. And then just grab you a few bolts here and go ahead and get those started by hand. Okay, so I'm just gonna use my small impact here and I'll just get them snug. And I'll kind of go in a crisscross pattern just to make this uh, go on there evenly. So then grab your torque wrench and you want to torque these to 89 inch pounds or I believe it's right at seven and a half foot pounds. Okay, and as you saw at the end there, I just went all the way around again, just to make sure, because I did forget that one. So, got those all torqued. So now we should be good. Okay, so before we start filling, like I said in the beginning of the video, this is all that came out of the transmission there. And then I also dumped what was in there into here from the uh, filter and all that. So, I got two empty gallon size old oil jugs here. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour it into there. And you can see these ones have a sight glass and it tells you how much. So let me go ahead and uh, start pouring this in there and then we'll see how much we end up with. So I'll stop right there on that one. And uh, cause this line right here, this side is gonna be quartz. And that's right at four quarts. Uh, these are five quart jugs, but I'm not sure where that stops at. So right there is four quarts. So let me grab the other one here. Okay, and looks like we are just right above so maybe a uh, four and a quarter quart there on this one. So as you can see, that right there, that'll put us at pretty much eight and a quarter of a quart. Um, and all I bought was uh, eight total quarts. So if I gotta go get more, I'll go get more. But go ahead and put the lid on these real quick. So then go ahead and uh, get yourself, you can see I got this little nice long funnel here. So go ahead and feed that down through here. And get this out of the way here. Okay, so I went ahead and grabbed the owner's manual. I just wanna show you guys real quick here. So if I turn the page um, 
5-102, this is the capacity chart. And if you see transaxle, automatic, complete drain and refill, it's showing seven quarts on there. So I'm not really sure why, uh, you know, like I said, I pulled over or pulled out a little over eight quarts unless this uh, transmission was overfilled that I did not check by pulling that plug before I drained it. So uh, I think what I'll do is I'll go ahead and uh, start out with uh, probably six, maybe seven quarts here, and then we'll check and see. And then also, if you turn to page 6-13, you can see automatic transaxle. It's gonna be Dexron 6. Transmission fluid is what we need to use here. And so I went ahead and got these off of Amazon. It's the AC Delco uh, Dexron 6. And I'll put a link in the description for these as well. And this is the synthetic. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start filling here. Okay, so there's six, and I'm just gonna go ahead and do the uh, seventh quart here, and then we can start it and uh, check everything. Okay, so with our seven quarts in there, I'm just gonna leave that funnel in there just in case we need to add more. So now I'm gonna go ahead and start it. I'll go through all the gears, and then uh, we'll leave it running. I'll go underneath, and there's an 11 millimeter plug we need to pull located on the transmission there. And once we pull that, if transmission uh, fluid starts dripping out of that, then we're good on the level. If there's uh, nothing coming out of there, then we need to add some until it starts to drip out of there. Okay, so let's go ahead and start it with our seven quarts in there. Go ahead and let this uh, sit here for a minute and warm up because I want to show you guys something. So I got this straight from GM here. And of course it says we need to use Dexron 6. And then also, so the dry fill capacity of this transmission is between 10 and 13 quarts total. Of course this wasn't dry, but I did let this sit overnight so the transmission was cool when I drained it. So that gave that torque converter more time to drain and everything into the pan so we get more fluid out that way. Um, but it says on here, course we need to have the vehicle level which we do fold all that and then it says we need to use a scan tool to check the transmission temperature because there's no gauge or anything on this car and then we need to run the transmission temperature to at least 104 degrees Fahrenheit which I um, so I do have my scan tool hooked up here as you can see so I'll look at that here in a minute um, so we'll go ahead and let this reach temperature and then it says we need to shift through all the gears once it's up to temperature there. And then um, we'll go ahead and remove that plug down below that there, that 11 millimeter. We'll check the fluid level and it says it should be even with the bottom of the plug there. And if it's not, we need to add transmission fluid in small amounts until it begins to drip out of that hole. And um, and then of course, we don't really need to do any of that stuff. So just maybe make sure the level's correct. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this idle here. We'll get this up to temp. And I do have my scan tool, so I'm kind of timing this to see how long it's gonna take to warm up. But if we go to live data, transmission control module here. And if I go down to transmission fluid temp, and so you can see right now we're sitting at 33 degrees uh, Celsius. So 104 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, we would need to be at 40 degrees Celsius. So like I said, I'll go ahead and let this uh, warm up some more, let it idle here until we get to 40 degrees Celsius, which will be 104 degrees Fahrenheit. And then we can go ahead and switch through the gears 
and uh, I'll climb under there and we'll pull that 11 millimeter plug and see if we need to add any fluid. All right, so as you can see, uh, actually we're sitting at 41 now, so we're at 105 degrees Fahrenheit. So uh, let me go ahead and start switching through some of these gears here. So I'll just slowly put it into reverse. And then into neutral. Go into drive. Just pause in a few seconds here. Back up to neutral. Reverse. And then back into park. So now let's go ahead and uh, step underneath there and uh, we'll pull that plug. So right over here by the passenger side, you can see that's gonna be your 11 millimeter plug. So let me go ahead and pull that and then just make sure you got a drip hand under here to catch the fluid that falls out of that. And as you can see, no fluid is coming out. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, add some more up top there and I'll keep checking this. And once it starts dripping, then I'll go ahead and stop filling. Okay guys, so I went ahead and added that uh, last eight quart and you can see it's still not coming out. So I'm gonna run to the store real quick, go grab another quart of uh, Dextron 6. Okay guys, so I just got back from the store, got another quart of Dexron 6. So let me go ahead and start it, and then uh, I'll crawl back under there and remove that plug. I did put that plug in while I was gone, just to make sure. So I'll go ahead and start it and uh, pull that plug again. Okay, so I'll go ahead and pull this again. I just had it finger tight. And then, uh, I'll go ahead and start adding a little bit of that ninth quart. And we'll see where we end up. Okay, so as you can see, starting to drip out of there. And that was right at uh, just about eight and a half quarts. So I'll go ahead and just let that drip a little more. Okay, so as you can see, that's pretty much done dripping now, barely coming out. So I'm gonna call that good there. So I'll go ahead and uh, Stick this plug back in here. And tighten that up. And then before I clean that, I'll spray it with some brake clean, but I'll go ahead and shut it off before I spray that. So then you can just take some brake clean and go ahead and spray that just to clean that up. Then you can get your funnel out of here and then go ahead and uh, replace your transmission fill cap here. Screw that on.
And then we can go ahead and lower the vehicle, get all four jack stands out of there. And then also don't forget to get your uh, engine cover back on here. Okay, so that's gonna do it for the video. Again, this was a 2006 Chevy Cobalt. Went ahead and replaced the internal transmission filter along with the fluid as well. And again, that's why I like to collect all the old fluid that comes out when I drain it and then measure it and use that as a reference when I go to refill it. Because like I said before, if you're not having any transmission issues, everything's running fine, you're not gonna hurt anything by adding the same amount of fluid that came out. And if you know that nobody's ever touched it, or if you know that it wasn't overfilled, then you should be fine. So again, I used uh, right at eight and a half quarts on this pretty much. And if you take a look here, so again, I was at uh, about 8.25 quarts on here. But again, there's probably still a little left over in the filter that I threw away and all that. So all in all, I'm pretty sure it equaled out to uh, eight and a half quarts so we should be good so hopefully this video helps you out if it does uh hit that subscribe button and uh, check out some of my other videos i got quite a few on this vehicle alone so check those out and uh, i'll see you next time thanks